I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something a little bit different today and uh, there's not gonna be much cutting involved I can pause the video on my phone when I need to um, so please bear with me if I've got like some little crazy bloopers and stuff mixed in here I'm just kind of winging it um, I wasn't planning on doing a video on this but then I thought you know there could be plenty of people who are actually interested in it so why not um, I like to do a lot of things naturally and as a, with the least amount of reliance on industrial society as I possibly can. So I like to support local farmers, I like to support small businesses, I like to make a lot of things by hand, I like to use natural products. Um, I like to use essential oils, people who know me know I'm, a, I'm an essential oil freak, I'm, I'm like crazy on it. Um, so I am making lotion. The thing is, um, I <clears throat> buy my drums from Tribal Spirit Drums and Music from Northern Quebec in Canada. And they're, uh, they're awesome people, great, great people. You should definitely shop there if you're in the market for leather or drums or drum kits or feather fans or sage kits or anything like that um, but uh, what they do is really cool because they don't hunt the animals to get the skins they go around to the local hunters and a lot of these people are sustenance hunters so they hunt for food and they use the animal they don't just kill for sport um, and so this is going to happen regardless, you know, and um, I think it's awesome that they're supporting themselves and they're feeding their families from the land. And, um, but they don't need all these leathers and all the, the random other stuff that you can get with um, hunting. So the, the good folks at Tribal Spirit Drums and Music goes and collects the hides from all of these hunters and has them tanned and stretched and they use the rawhide for drums and that is where they source their leather which I think is just absolutely awesome because it's it's part that would otherwise go to waste so they're actually making a concerted effort to lessen the impact on the environment for the industry so that's really cool. One of the things that they do, there's a lot of bears up there. Um, black bears in particular, um, and a lot of the hunters hunt bear and they eat the bear meat, which by the way, according to common like urban myth is not bad for you. <laughs> a lot of people have been eating bear meat for a long time. Um, but bear meat is really fatty. Bears hibernate, so they gather a lot of fat. Um, one of the other things that Tribal Spirit Drums and Music does is collects the hides and the fat from the bears. And they render it, and you can buy bear grease from them. I keep it in the fridge just to make sure that it doesn't go rancid. Um, and anything that you would use lard for like pig grease or vegetable grease you can use this for um it doesn't have much of a smell to it it doesn't have much of a taste to it you know they process it right they've been doing this you know they learned how to do it from their parents who learned how to do it from their parents and so on down the way so their process is pretty much perfected and i think it's like five bucks in american money to get this little jar but this little jar will last you for ages um, especially when you're using it to condition your drums and your leather and using it occasionally for making products like I am with this lotion I'm including bear grease in it because I found out um, it's highly medicinal people have been using it for a long 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 time um, it's apparently from my understanding it's really great for your skin <laughs> there's a little uh, floating ghost left over from Halloween um, it's really good for your skin um, it I've heard that it helps with eczema it helps with psoriasis 
Um, and I've also heard that people have used it for generations and generations for joint problems, um, like uh, easing arthritis and growing pains and that sort of thing. Now around this family we have a lot of eczema problems and we end up having a lot of growing pains. And I just found out my husband's getting bursitis in one of his joints. So I decided I was going to bite the bullet and make some bear grease lotion. So this is a little adventure. Okay, so I had to stop the video and start a new one to turn around. That kind of sucks. But um, I've made lotion before. It was years ago. So I um, had to look up my ratios to use again. And so these are the ratios I found out to use. I'm using 1 8 cup, my handwriting is atrocious, of bear grease. 1 8 cup each of castor oil, jojoba oil, and I wrote down coconut oil, but I decided to use grapeseed oil instead. Um, three and a half tablespoons of cocoa butter, which is here. That's roughly three and a half tablespoons. Um, three and a half tablespoons of emulsifying wax, which the wax I use is all natural, organic, non-GMO, soy-based emulsifying wax. And so if you can get it, Awesome. I will uh, try to put a link down in the description so that you can use the same thing I've got. And the same with my cocoa butter. It's raw, um, unrefined. It has a rather strong smell to it. If you don't like cocoa butter smell, you might not like it. Um, along with the oils, which are all in my handy dandy little measuring cup, um, including the little chunks of bear grease. Um, with about two and a half cups of water, which is right here in my pot to warm up, and one and a half teaspoons of phenonip, which is a preservative. Um, like phenonip here um, is made from the horseradish root, and if you can find a nice natural source to get phenonip, it is FDA approved for cosmetic use, and um, it'll extend the shelf life of your products that you make um, up to a year as long as you are careful to you know keep your stuff out of the sun and in temperature control keep it cool you know you don't have to freeze it but keep it cool or keep it in the fridge and keep it out of the sun because the sun can trigger algae and bacteria growth um, there's only so much a natural preservative can fight <laughs> So just, you know, use common sense and um, you can find some chemical preservatives that are a lot stronger that will do a fight more for longer, but I would rather use all natural. So I use Phenonet and um, I have my double boiler ready. This is just an old casserole dish and a pan underneath with water barely sits on top of the water and this is what I will use to melt my oils and butters and everything and do all my combinations and yes I still use the last of my Dawn dish soap <laughs> I'm trying I had a big stock so I'm trying to finish it out um, before I go to a, a much better more natural one but there we go that's my setup I'm taking you along on the adventure so I hope you enjoy all right, here we go. My water is not boiling yet, but I'm pouring my oils into there. You kind of want to shake a lot of the stuff out. I eyeballed it. I'm not working on being exact here, but um, you want to get as close as you can. And the cocoa butter. If you're wondering about my plastic containers here, um, I get a lot of things from a company called Holy Cow and it's a conglomeration of a bunch of local um, farms that sell different uh, dairy products and meats and stuff and this is what they pack in so I clean them out and I reuse them um, and also my emulsifying wax I will go ahead and put in here to melt um, the emulsifying wax you might be wondering why I even bother to use it 
And I know my burners are just disgustingly nasty. Um, emulsifying wax, what it does is um, it has parts to it, to each little molecule that attach to water and to oils. So you know oil and water don't mix. You use an emulsifying wax to make your oil and water mix. It also thickens up just a little bit. But um, more than anything, it makes everything blend so you don't end up with a layer of cocoa butter and then a layer of oil with a layer of water in between. Um, which is what would happen if you didn't have a very good emulsion going. So I'm just going to do this while it melts. Because I don't want to singe any of my uh, oils. At the same time, I am going to heat up my water. Now, I don't want it like crazy boiling, um, but they sh it should be warm when you combine so that you don't um, shock your recipe and cause like an instant <laughs> lock up. Because I've done that before and it was unpleasant, to say the least. Okay, we are back. This is where the magic happens. You see everything has just melted. Um, I turned my heat down, so I don't want it to get too hot. Um, heat can cause some problems with um, the medicinal properties of some of the oils. You don't want to have too much heat going. So I'm just taking that off the wall, off the heat. Yes, I have very bad hard water. So all of the pans I use always have like marks and scratches all over them from getting the hard water deposits off. But we don't drink the water that comes out of here. It's well water in our well was contaminated about a year and a half ago. This is adding the phenonit, which you add at the end of your oil phase, where you melt your oils and butters together. Um, it can handle a pretty high temperature, which is pretty good. A lot of preservatives are really picky and won't work very well with high temperature. But phenonit will, um, probably because it's natural. I have my water warmed up. You can see it's a little steamy. So then I just add it in. You see it start to solidify, thicken a bit. And then just stir. Stir it like you're baking a cake or making gravy. I would usually use an electric mixer, but um, I just had the feeling I wanted to do it by hand this time. Call me crazy. But um, as it cools, you just make sure to come back and stir it every now and then. It helps it to cool down faster and um, maintain the emulsion while it's cooling down. Once it's nice and cool, you won't have to worry about it. If it ends up too thin, <clears throat> it's a nice little trick I use. So my trick is if it ends up too thin, I will freeze it. You freeze it, and once it's nice and chilled and thick in the freezer, you get an electric mixer and just whip the heck out of it. And it will thicken it up pretty good. Or you can use stearic acid to thicken it up, but I prefer not to put stearic acid in it because then again we're looking at a chemical that I don't want to use. And until I can find purely natural derived steric acid, sure it's out there somewhere, but uh, I haven't found it yet. And so I prefer to instead freeze and whip the heck out of it. I used to do that for making whipped body butter. You, it's the same recipe, you just put less water in it and then you freeze it and thaw it and every time you take it out of the freezer, you whip it with an electric mixer and it whips air into it, which makes it thicker and um, ends up having a really luxurious feel. Uh, I love making my own lotion because um, I use it on my dog. <laughs> the paws of his uh, 
feet, his little pads on his feet, um, get dry. And then we have hardwood floors. So when his feet are really dry, and he is really big, and when his feet are really dry, he can't really get a grip on the ground, so his feet kind of slide everywhere, so we lotion his paws. Um, if I'm going to use it on my dog and my child and myself, I want it to be all natural. Um, something that's not going to make him sick if he licks it off. Um, and I'm still coming back occasionally and just stirring. If you're wondering, I'm listening to my favorite playlist on um, my Google Home. The mining of the spirit. Somewhere over there. Um, that has a tribe called Red and Superman and uh, Taboo, Mag 7, and um, Frank Wong, and a few other artists on there. Um, Prolific the Rapper has actually got a couple of really great songs that I listened to that he put the music to a Tribe Called Red music. That was pretty awesome. And just for those of you who are thinking I'm absolutely insane for babying my dog by making special lotion just so it won't bother him, look at these paws. Okay, these paws are as big as my hand. He's got like bear claws here. And they get they get really dry. And yes, he's getting white fur. He's getting old. My old puppy. But he's my furry boy. <laughs> and I love him to bits. Yeah. So I have to make sure everything is safe for him to be around. You're a good boy. And he eats all natural, grain-free, gluten-free food. Um, of course, he gets grain and gluten from eating scraps. <laughs> I'm just horrible and I feed my dog table scraps. Um, but usually the scraps he gets is meat and oils from cooking meat. And that's really, really good for him. He keeps him nice and healthy. And you see he is just as lovey as he can possibly be. He's always wanting to snuggle and cuddle and get attention and love. And he is an English Mastiff. He's nine years old. He'll be 10 in two months. Um, and a lot of people say he doesn't look like an English Mastiff, but he is, he's full-blooded. He was the runt of the litter. He weighs about 175 pounds. And no, you see, he's big. <laughs> he is my big, big baby puppy. I love him dearly. And my boy in here playing his super violent video games. Yep. He uses it as his therapy when he gets angry. He channels that anger into the game. So that's kind of awesome. I've been showing people how to make lotion. This one's still stirring. It's, it's only on places. Yes. And oh, uh, here Thor decided to get up and come walk around and show you just how big of a baby he really is. <laughs> you see him next to me. He comes up to my hip, mid-back. Oh, he's my big baby. Don't know what I'd do without him. Um, and my lotion. I found going these down. awesome oh. bottles that are made of 100% post-consumer recycled plastic. So that is awesome and recycling is important to us. It's good for the earth and good for us. So it's also recyclable. See it's got the recycle symbol one. And so it has not reached the end of its life. So we'll be using them until we can't use them anymore, wash them out and recycle them again. Okay, um, I will bring you back when this lotion is cooled down nicely and um, it's ready to go in the bottles. Just putting oils in and put them in the bottles. I can already feel when I'm starting to stir it around the edges, I can feel it starting to thicken. So I'm just making sure to stop here every now and then and stir it 
and scrape the edges in the bottom to keep all of that mixed. So it, so it cools um, more uniformly. All right, see you soon. All right, my lotion came out and um, it's a little thin. You see it's kind of um, holding the lines, but not by very much. It's pretty, pretty thin. It's still a little warm, but it is still pretty. essential oils. What I've decided to use is, um, I love my doTERRA oils. I'll use On Guard, which will actually make it kind of an antimicrobial lotion in a way. Um, good for cold and flu season. And frankincense. Vetiver, which is very, very calming and it's also great for your skin. Um, helps with wrinkles and pores and all those things. Melaleuca, which you see is tea tree. Um, this is also great for your skin and it's also antimicrobial. Um, and lavender, which is also great for your skin and um, it smells awesome. Um, see ya getting low. I need to get some more. It's going to take a little while, so I've got to cook dinner in the meantime. I'll see you this evening. Okay, my lotion is cool. It is just thick enough to do its job and just thin enough to go through the pumps very well. Um, if you want thicker lotion, then add less water. If you want um, thinner lotion, add more water. Now it is time to add our uh, essential oils, and I had said five drops of each into here. So one, two, three, four, five. And on guard. One, two, three, four, five. Now some of these oils are more like sap. They're super thick like vetiver. This usually takes forever to drop out. And it takes even longer if you don't hold it straight up and down. Trust me. Been there. Done that. Burn the t-shirt. It took forever <laughs> to get even one little drop out holding it at an angle. This is a thick, pure essential oil, one from vetiver, which is a type of um, tall grass that has these very long roots. Um, it's used to control soil erosion in a lot of places, but uh, in India they actually use it for cooling. Um, apparently it's really good for that. I have found that it just smells as my husband says, it smells like velvet feels, um, and it's just really relaxing and calming. It's great for your skin. One, two, three, four, five. That's my tea tree oil, melaleuca, and lavender. One, two, three, four, five. A little extra lavender. Never heard anybody, right? And then just mix. Oh, it smells so good! Mm. Oh, that blend of those oils and the cocoa butter. Oh, it smells so good. And then give it a good tap. And then we will, I don't know if I can do this holding the camera, and we will bottle. These are, I think they're 16 ounce bottles. But yeah, kind of hard to control, so I will catch back up with you when the bottles are full. Here we go, all bottled up and ready to use, so let's. 
check it out. Okay, it's a, it's a little thin. Um, I'll probably use a little bit less water. Um, but it is silky and feels really, really nice. So we will see how this stuff goes for um, all the different conditions that we want to use it for. And um, yeah, it's easy to make. What takes the longest is uh, checking your consistency and making sure it's the right thickness that you like and waiting for it to cool down. <laughs> Everything else is pretty fast. And as long as you use boiling water to clean up where you've had your, your thick stuff, um, just pour boiling water on it, swish and, and pour it out and it will be a cinch. Um, now my hair is all crazy. I've had a crazy day and uh, have some brand new lotion and it feels awesome. It's already, I can already tell a difference in my skin just from putting it on. I rubbed it on my the back of my hand a little bit and um, no, it's, it's actually helping my skin pretty immediately. So that's awesome. I'm, I'm I'm excited and happy about that. Um, let's see if I can get it on my son. He has new Miller eczema. So we will see how it works on his skin and see if it helps his growing pains and see if it helps my arthritis and my joints and see if it helps my husband's bursitis and I will post some updates as soon as I can. Fine. Why don't you help your brother when you see him fall? Why do we act like God don't see it all? Why do we call them black, them white, them Asians and use labels? Now that's racism. I don't want no Hawaiian name. Why? I don't want no Hawaiian name. Yo, why? I don't want no Hawaiian name. Why? I don't want no Hawaiian name.